everyone. It is such a pleasure and honor for me to be meeting all of you today. So welcome everyone. Welcome to this session on how to identify the gaps in your leadership competency. This is part of our monthly self-leadership series. Some of you are here for the first time and the others who have joined these sessions before and uh, some of you have joined these sessions before, but uh, it's been quite some time that I've not seen you. So I uh, bid you welcome. It is a pleasure to have you joining us in this session. Now, um, uh, as usual, allow me to introduce myself to those who are new. Uh, I'm Mazuki. I'm a neurosemantics trainer and meta coach, and I represent Malaysia in the international leadership team of the International Society of Neurosemantics. I help people in systematically develop skills in leading, communicating, and coaching to bring out the best in yourself and others. And if you notice, I deliberately stressed on the word systematically because that's exactly what we'll be doing this evening to, to look at how we can identify the gaps in our leadership and then systematically develop them. Because if we don't, then there'll be gaps. Uh, and when I say gaps, when there are gaps around, for example, if there are gaps around your teeth, now, if it is in front, then it is not going to be <laughs> very nice looking. But even if it is at the back there, I've got one, one gap over here. Sometimes when I chew, it doesn't feel so comfortable. So that's why as best as possible, we want to be able to close the gaps. Now, in the 60 to 90 minutes together, we'll be discussing on leadership, levels of leadership, dimensions of leadership, and kinds of leadership. And especially for Bill, I hope that this evening will be a, a quick summary or in, a reminder for you uh, of what we discussed last Sunday, okay? Now, I will, as usual, I will pause for discussion after each main point. Uh, this is to invite questions, comments, and contributions. And please, if you have anything to comment, especially those of you who like to think out loud, allow me to hear your thinking. Otherwise, I'll be speaking here all by myself, and that's not so much fun. So I love to hear your comments. My style is to be light and humorous. So... If I laugh or smile, I'm never laughing at you, but at our silly human qualities. My purpose is to lighten things up, reduce being serious, and be more real. Before I continue on, I would just again like to welcome those of you who are uh, here. Uh, Hawa Maji from Nigeria, thank you for being here. Bill from Vietnam. Uh, and uh, make sure that you are not looking at your uh, at the handphone because you are driving bill. Uh, Ines uh, from Brazil, uh, Lina uh, from uh, are you in Shalam? Yes, in Shalam, uh, and Sarah uh, also from Malaysia, uh, and Guaching. Uh, I consider her the rock of the uh, the sessions. She's uh, almost every week together with us. I really appreciate that. Uh, Samson, uh, you are also a regular, and also Lucy. Welcome, Lucy. Thank you for uh, joining us this uh, evening. Now, uh, I guess uh, Hawa might be having some connection issues, so uh, just have patience. We do have those connection issues from time to time. Thank you. Now, um, as an introduction to this topic, and, and this topic... Uh, sort of, uh, I would say, uh, came out of the blue, so to speak, because I was discussing on this topic with Bill uh, last Sunday. Uh, and the other mitigating reason why I uh, brought up this topic, because just recently I uh, coached uh, a founder. She's a founder of a company, uh, uh, has grown uh, very big, uh, and uh, the company is doing very well. Now, she... Um, decided to be uh, the uh, 
the executive director for, uh, for, for the organization. And she need, need to uh, chair the board meeting. And so she came, to, uh, she came to, to us when I say us, that's me and uh, my wife, Rosita. So uh, uh, we, uh, we coached her on how to run a board of directors meeting. Now, the funny thing was that after all of those things, we went through step-by-steps step, uh, to coach her. Then uh, my wife, as usual, uh, she's always in awe of my abilities. <laughs> uh, that's very nice. <laughs> she said to me, how, how did you know all of those uh, regarding how to chair a board of directors meeting? I said, uh, I learned that at school. And when I said that, then I paused. Because what I, uh, the reason why I paused was it suddenly hit me. Not everybody learned this at school. But I did because uh, I went to a boarding school. And even when we were teenagers, the boarding school, we had a student's union. And every month, once a month, the student's union would have the uh, union meeting. And for five years, every month, I was attending a union meeting. And we have our constitution, we have our standing order, and we know how to make a proposal. I propose and I second that. And uh, some, fu some uh, funny fellows say, I third that. Uh, so that, that's, that's off there. <laughs> but uh, unconsciously, I was learning that. So I learned about constitution, standing orders from attending those meetings. And the, the flash of re, uh, realization that hit me was that not many people had similar experiences. No wonder that not many people do not have the skills to run meetings. Now, bringing it into the context of leadership, your, leaderships, uh, your leadership skills were shaped by your life experiences. The thing is this, what experiences did you not have? Those experiences that you did not have may be the source of the gaps in your leadership competency. So do you wish to know how to identify those gaps? So this is where we are uh, uh, right now this evening to look into how to identify those gaps uh, systematically. So I've just uh, shared my uh, screen uh, with you. I hope that you can see the screen now. Now, in order to be able to, under, uh, to have a holistic, wholesome view of uh, the skills that you need in leading, uh, I would say that the answer lies in looking at the matrix of the world. This is the domain of your leadership because your world matrix, uh, for those of you who are not yet familiar uh, with, <clears throat> uh, with the matrix model, in a short while, I'll just uh, show, uh, show that to you. I think I, I have a slide on the matrix model. Oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, the, the matrix model refers to how we relate to the world around us, uh, the, the world matrix. So let me just uh, show you a very quick uh, slide here on the matrix model. Uh, there are three types of uh, matrices that we have. One is called the grounding matrix. That's our state, our mental and emotional state. That's our state matrix. Then these are our process matrices. One is the meaning matrix. We put meaning to things. Then our intention matrix, our intention of doing things. For example, what is your intention for being here this evening? And if I were to go to each and every one of you, you will have different answers. And all your answers are correct to you. And they are relevant to you. So that's the, those are the three uh, uh, matrices. Uh, one is the grounding matrix. Then we have the two process matrices, the meaning and intention. And then there are concepts that we hold uh, in this world. And those concepts can be 
viewed as five what we call content matrices. Content matrix uh, matrices, one is the self matrix, next is the power matrix, this uh, relates to our capabilities, our uh, competencies, then the matrix uh, of others. The matrix, uh, matrix here refers to our beliefs, understanding, uh, meanings, uh, values about if it is uh, others matrix about the, uh, the people around us uh, in the world. Then the temporal matrix, the uh, matrix of time, and then the matrix of the world, how we view the world, how we are moving in this world. So the, the world matrix defines the roles that we play in our life. So in order for us to have a holistic and comprehensive view of the leadership skills that we need in our life. That's why I'm inviting you to take a look uh, at the skills from the uh, perspective of the world matrix. Okay, so that's where uh, we are going uh, 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 right now, uh, taking in the first point <clears throat> uh, for this uh, for the discussion this evening is to look at leadership. Uh, uh, in in general first. Yeah? We are going to go into some specificity, but we are going to go into leadership in general. Now, before I continue on, are there any questions from anyone for the time being before we continue on? Uh, and Hashim, thank you very much for joining us. I just noticed that you've, jo you've just joined us, Hashim. So are you good with that uh, quick introduction? Right. So let's uh, take the first point, which is leadership. Right. Now, the first point about leadership is leadership is functional. Leadership is functional. It is not absolute. Every leader also follows. When you are leading, you lead. And when you are a leader, you are also a follower. Leadership functionality responds to an adaptive need. Leadership is a function of what you can do using your talents and skills. You lead based on your knowledge and competency in relation to some task at hand. So leadership emerges from tapping into the potential of people and releasing their highest and best skills. Now, this concept of leadership is functional. It came out of uh, Maslow's study of the Blackfoot Indians in 1936 in uh, Alberta, Canada, uh, as an anthropological study by Ruth Benedict, uh, his mentor. What Abraham Maslow discovered was that leadership is functional during his studies. Leadership depends on what you are best at. What functions are you skilled at? So how well can you step back and let another person lead? So questions like, who is best at doing this? So let's say in the context of uh, working in the office, I'm asking the question, who is best at project management? Who is best at organizing this? Uh, who has more expertise uh, in the area of uh, student administration, for example? So when the person has that, uh, when a person is the one who is best to handle a certain uh, function, then that is when that person steps up to become a leader. So this is what we are referring to leadership is functional. So I lead when I have expertise in particular area. When we are doing something that is not within my expertise, I step back and allow somebody else to lead. Uh, in the game of basketball, I wonder uh, anyone of you watch basketball. In the game of basketball, they have, they have this thing called uh, to feed the hot hand. In but. Uh, in, in any game, uh, basketball uh, as well, there are days when you are performing well, there are days that you are not. 
So in basketball, when they have this thing called feeding the hot hand, out of the uh, five players on, uh, on the court, if they notice that one player is, uh, is playing exceedingly well, so what the other four do is that whenever, whenever they get the ball, they'll quickly want to pass the ball to that hot hand, the person who's playing exceedingly well. So that's what they mean by feeding the hot hand. And when his hands grow cold, somebody's hand becomes hot, then they feed that hand. So this is the concept of leadership is functional. When you have expertise in a particular function, you lead. When you don't have expertise in that function, you don't. So that brings us to the second point with respect to leadership, is that leadership is situational. No one is always a leader. There are no absolute leaders. And in our world, we do notice that some people who believe they are leaders and they think that they have to lead all of the time, we find that they are not doing a good job most of the time. Because when you try to lead in an area that is not of your competency, that's when you do all of those mistakes and cause havoc around you. So leadership depends on the context and situation. You lead in some situations and not in others. And as I say that, I just want to uh, give some time for you to go inside and think of in the context of the work that you do. What are the areas that you are really good at that you lead and you feel really confident when you lead? And what are the other areas that you are not good at? So this is a time for you to allow somebody else to step up. It doesn't mean you are any less of a leader because a leader is also a follower. We are all both leaders and followers, depending on the time, context, skill, and circumstance. Leading, leading without someone following is not leading. So if you are not skilled in a particular area and you try to lead, have you ever had that situation? You try to lead. The word is try. The question is, is anybody following? <laughs> so that's why John C. Maxwell, he has this saying, uh, leadership is, influ uh, is influence. So the mark of a leader is that, it, so the test of a leader is to look behind you and see if anybody's following. <laughs> if nobody's following, then you are just uh, having a uh, walk in the park. You are not leading. So the leadership process is leading, following, and following, and leading. It's just like a dance of roles. Sometimes you lead, sometimes you follow, even though you are the uh, positional leader. This means we need to know as much about followership or following as about leadership or leading. And the next point is that leadership is about competence. It's about function. It is functional. Asking yourself the question, can you handle the situation before you? If the answer is no, let somebody else lead. That is the best thing that you can do for the organization. What knowledge, understanding, experience, skills do you need to effectively function as a leader in this particular situation? What is the context in which you lead? The first task is to find the right situation for your interests, passions, skills, and aptitudes. So what I would like to do is to end this particular point uh, with this uh, statement that there is no singular kind of leader. Instead, there are many kinds. It depends on the situation, the context, the level, the area, the function. Okay. So uh, why I want to end on this point uh, with respect to uh, 
uh, uh, sorry, why I want to end on this statement on this uh, point on leadership is that I do notice nowadays people are so fixated with kind uh, with types of leadership, styles of leadership, kinds of leadership. Uh, so the, the key thing is those come after the competency. Those comes after understanding functions, understanding situations. Only then you bring the kinds of leadership or styles of leadership into play. Okay, so I'll just pause here uh, with respect to this first point on leadership. So any questions or comments, uh, go ahead. Uh, you're welcome to do this. Mazuki, Mazuki, yes. could you further explain uh... We, we are both leaders and followers. A good leader uh, needs to be a good followers. Hmm. What, what it means? Um, we, this, is, this is where coming from the uh, leadership that is functional and contextual. So uh, what we mean by uh, leadership, uh, the, the role that you play as a leader, sometimes you lead, sometimes you follow. If you are doing a function that you are skilled at, that's when you bring people to follow you. So you now you are leading. Now, when you are not skilled in that particular area, because, uh, uh, because to, to complete any role, there are so many skills involved. So when you are not so skilled in that particular area, you look for the people around you and ask, uh, so who's, uh, who's able to do this well? I am not uh, so, uh, so skilled in this particular area. And let that person lead. Let that person come up with the ideas because that person has greater competency. Yeah. So uh, Guaching, maybe you are familiar when we were working on the uh, ACMC uh, MSTP project uh, that uh, there are many areas, and I mentioned to the to the committee, there are many areas that I am not competent uh, in, especially in the area of branding, in the area of marketing. So, uh, uh, and at that time, you stepped up with all the information. So that's what that's what we are referring to, leading and following. So when you step up with the information about branding and you have exp more experience than I do about branding, that's when I follow. So that's the, uh, what we mean by leading and following uh, at the same time. Does that make sense, Gua Ching? Yes, it's all about collaboration. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So I, I understood now. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else has got any yeah, comments? I have, a, I have a question. Well, I just want to seek clarity from what you said about the last slide. Uh, you mentioned that lead, there's no single leadership style. And then you mentioned something about after competency and then only the leadership style comes out. So can you give an example of a few of what that looks like? Yes. So uh, styles, uh, just, like, uh, uh, just like fashion. I noticed that when I was um, uh, when I was uh, a teenager, uh, we had this fashion uh, for pants uh, or jeans, which uh, which is called bell-bottomed jeans. Hashim, you remember those? <laughs> and I see. Yeah, all... I remember well. Bell-bottom <laughs> days. <laughs> my my bell-bottom jeans, the the bottom is bigger than the waist. That's. <laughs> How much <laughs> the bell? Ah, <laughs> uh, you remember that. And it, uh, by the eighties, it went out of style. And I noticed recently it came back into style. <laughs> right. So style is according to the situation. So when we talk about leadership style, we are looking at what's the situation, so that I can apply a style that makes sense over there. Yeah. For example, in the context of, uh, okay, uh, little children is uh, uh, quite easy to give the example. So now we are uh, facilitating, we are coaching uh, people to do things. 
so that is a style of uh, leading called uh, facilitation or coaching. Now, when somebody doesn't have the competency to do something, facilitation doesn't work. Because in order for you to get them to understand something, they need content. If they don't have content, no matter how much facilitation, they cannot get at the right answer. They need to be shown what to do. So in that scenario, I might bring in more F of an authoritative style of leading. I tell them, you need to do this. After the, uh, uh, you need to do A. After A, you need to do B. After B, you need to do C and D. So if I am uh, leading somebody who is not competent in a certain function, then I bring in more authoritative or authoritative style of leading. However, if I am leading a team of experts, that authoritative style of uh, leading is not useful anymore and it can be counterproductive. I need to be more facilitative. Let each expert bring up their uh, points of view and then we create a consensus about what to do next. So that's why uh, I mentioned styles will only come in once we understand the competencies, the levels of uh, competencies. Does that make sense, Sarah? Yeah, totally makes sense. So I thought there was like a specific style. I mean, I understood it differently, but you clarified that it is actually based on the context, the situation, the circumstances where maybe the authoritarian style calls for it, then you step into it. But when there's like a, like a bunch of experts, then that kind of style does not apply, right? Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. So let's say, let's say uh, uh, your, your, how, how old is your daughter? Um, she's going to be five, four and a half. Four and a half. Let's yeah. say she's never seen a snake before and she doesn't know that a snake is, uh, uh, can be a danger because it's venomous. Uh, is danger. So a snake comes, and because she doesn't know that it's dangerous, she might look at it and want to pet the snake. That's when you need to become a dictator, grab her bodily, take her to safety. <laughs> right? <laughs> so this is what we are referring to uh, styles change according to situations and function. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes. Hello. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? There is, there is a, a feedback. Okay. Okay. Ah. I can't hear you. Uh, so no. Yeah. There, there is audio feedback. Okay. okay. I'll do that. Hello? Yeah, there is that feedback uh, when you switch on your mic. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Right, uh, let's move on. Uh, and before we move on, uh, yes, I was about to say, uh, Amy, welcome. Uh, I'm so glad that you're able to join us uh, this evening. So we've covered the first point, which is on uh, leadership uh, specifically. Now we are moving to the next point, which is on the levels of leadership. Yeah? And uh, Sarah, I mentioned to you, uh, when we talk about styles, we need to take into account the levels of leadership. So for levels of leadership, I'd like to bring uh, to your attention uh, two models that you can look at uh, for levels of leadership. And I'll just go uh, as quickly as I can through these two models. Uh, one is uh, from Jim uh, Collins, uh, Good to Great. Uh, he showed the levels of leadership. Uh, one is uh, uh, at the basic level, which is about competency. So uh, the first level is a highly competent person leads through skills. So this is self-leadership. Yeah, so in the, in the context of uh, level of competency, you lead through your skills. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, so the, this leader makes productive contributions through talent, knowledge, skills, 
and good work habits. So at this point, let's say uh, you are in a team and you are, uh, you are skilled in one particular aspect of the work that people are doing. So how you lead, so this is where uh, we are looking at the, uh, uh, yes, thank you, uh, Samson. I was, I was just about to comment uh, based upon your uh, question here. Uh, is everyone a leader? So this is where we, we recognize that everyone is a leader. You need not, you may not be a positional leader. So this is also something that people are confused between leadership and positional leadership. So you may be a team member and in that team member, uh, sorry, you may be on, on a team uh, and as a team member, you contribute through one of your skills or competencies. So how you lead is you make positive contribution to the team by using your talent, knowledge, skills, and good work habits. That's how you lead. Leading does not mean that you tell people what to do. That is not what, uh, that is one of the things, not the, not the main thing about uh, leadership. So at the first level is through competency. So that so how even though even though you are not a positional leader you, you have not been appointed or positioned as a leader how you lead is to be the best uh, performer to be the uh, uh, to be the most uh, competent person in that particular area so this is the first level of leadership the second level of leadership is uh, contribution a contributing team member leads by contributing. So now you are a team player leader. So as a team player, you want to do things, bring in your skills, contribute your individual capability to the achievement of the group objective and work effectively with others in a group setting. So this is how you are as a team player leader. This is how you lead when you are a team player. Next is management level. So a competent manager leads through the organization. So this is what is termed as man, uh, managerial leadership. Organizes people and resources towards the effective pursuit of predetermined objectives. So if I were to take the example of uh, a factory uh, uh, shop floor. So by the time a person becomes a team leader, that person is already managing and organizing. So that person needs to have the skill of what we, uh, what Jim Collins called as managerial leadership. Now, the fourth level is the level of a visionary. An effective leader leads via vision. This is what is termed as visionary leadership. Uh, and a visionary leader catalyzes commitment and vigorous pursuit of a clear, compelling vision, stimulating higher performance standards. So uh, uh, taking down the uh, organizational KPIs, uh, what is needed to be achieved by the organization, and bringing it, translating it into behaviors that the team can perform. So it's taking in the vision of the organization translating into uh, work performance in the team. So this is visionary leadership. At the higher level of visionary leadership is the founder of an organization. So the founder can see where uh, he or she is bringing the organization to and bringing in all the expertise of uh, other people uh, who are in the organization or outside the organization to support the achievement of that vision. So this is visionary leadership. And at the highest level here is embodied uh, leadership. An executive leader leads via being an example and model. This is called exemplary leadership. So level five leader here builds enduring greatness in organization through blend of humility and professional will. So they are not leading through telling people what to do. Now they are the example of what the vision is. So this is the uh, 
the embodied uh, level of leadership. So this is one model of the levels of leadership uh, that we got from Jim Collins. Uh, I'd like to bring in uh, another model. This is called the leadership uh, pipeline uh, from Mahala. Uh, Ram Charan, Stephen Drotter, and James uh, Noah. Now, the leadership pipeline uh, almost tells us a story of how uh, a person develops uh, in terms of their uh, levels of leadership, and also it shows how the leadership capability of a person may grow if you go through the pipeline. So the first uh, point in this pipeline is managing yourself. So that's the first level. This is about self-direction, competence, know-how. Uh, it is about achievement. You are prepared to act and follow through. Work by self-discipline. Uh, wanting recognition. So this is about managing uh, yourself. So this is self-leadership. From the uh, perspective of neurosemantics, that's what APG is about. Uh, the program Accessing Personal Genius is about having exquisite control and management of yourself so that you can perform your task uh, effectively. Yeah? So this is the first level. Then moving on that pipeline is managing others. What it means here is that now uh, at this level, you need to have the skill of giving directions, delegate, enable others to succeed, coach, uh, you have time for people, to be available to people and to be approachable. You attend to others, provide information, show how, uh, be an example of uh, what you want people to uh, do or be. So this is the second uh, level in this pipeline, managing others. The third level is managing managers. So as the organization grow, you need to have managers to manage different departments, different functions. Then, so at this third level is, this is what we call pure management, building team to utilize differences in the organization, hold people accountable, create synergy. And having that delight in seeing others grow and empower others. So those are the skills required to manage managers. Next level is managing functions. Now, at this level, you are integrating functions. Learn about uh, uh, functions. Understand all of the functions in the organization. Know how each of those functions uh, interact. I keep mentioning that uh, an organization, you need to have the financial element, you have the uh, customer element, you have the product or service element, and you have the uh, learning and growth element. So understand how all of these functions integrate uh, and how they interact. So that's managing functions. Next level is about managing the business. So not just functions, now the whole business. So what skills uh, do you need to have? Now you need to uh, have the strategy of the whole business. So you require time, uh, thinking time for reflection, analysis, and to be able to in integrate all of those functions. So that's at the level of managing business. And the next level is managing groups. So you have your business, then you have business groups. So integrating groups of companies, strategy, culture. So this, all of these skills come in. Next level is managing enterprise. So not just groups of companies, now the whole enterprise. So this requires long-term vision, culture development, aligning all people, develop social organization, Handle local politics, uh, the legal, social, media, and all of those. So those are uh, at the other level. Now, at each of these levels, there are certain things that you need to change as you go from one level to the other. What are they? Skills, 
time investment, values, attention, intention, and vision. So all of these skills, time investment, values, attention, intention, and vision changes from one level to the other. When you are managing yourself, you require a certain set of skills. Then when you move to managing others, you require another set of skills and different time investment. And you, when you move to managing others, so at each of the levels will require for you to continue changing. So that's why a leader is a learner. You need to keep learning new skills. Now, the issue is that, and this is uh, especially when I, uh, when I uh, notice about uh, entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs, they start off a business. They have this, uh, this idea about, uh, such a good idea of, uh, about business and they start off a business and uh, for uh, quite a, a, a number of them, the business uh, just uh, shot off and they were uh, successful. Notice that kind of uh, situation is that person all of a sudden starts there. Can you see that? Managing the business. And guess what happens in the next few years? Because they jump right into there. The question is, how good are they in all of these functions? And that is why sometimes founders, they flounder after a few years because they jump into a, a certain level of uh, lead, uh, leadership uh, 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 role, but because they are lacking the skills that were required at the lower level, uh, that didn't do them any good. The best example that we can see uh, about that was uh, Steve Jobs when he founded uh, Apple. So thrust into the role of, um, of a founder uh, managing the business, but lacking the skills that were required at the lower level, uh, he came to the point whereby he was sacked by his own CEO. And uh, if you were to read his uh, uh, biography, he said that that sacking was the best thing that could ever happen to him. Because when he went into next, he had that time for reflection. Then he began to notice the gaps. And when he was able to bridge the gaps in his leadership, and when he came back to Apple, that was a totally different game altogether. Okay? So that's why uh, when you look at yourself, what you are doing right now, let's say the example I give just now, you're already managing your, uh, your business. Yes, you need to have the skill of strategy of the whole thinking time for reflection and all that. But you need to reflect upon, okay, the other uh, levels that I skip. So what skills do I need to uh, uh, bring up for myself in order for me to, be, to make this uh, role to be more sustainable? And the final statement that I would like to make with respect to this uh, point on the levels of uh, leadership, uh, uh, leadership is that real leadership is personal intimate and intense you cannot uh, you cannot outsource <laughs> you cannot outsource this part of being intimate and personal to, to the people who are uh, at your first level in, in, in your first uh, level of circle you lead by engaging in in-depth and intimate relating and communicating you lead people by creating, listening, understanding, emphasizing, seeing trends, making connections, uh, creating value, pioneering new responses. So that's how you lead with people. People are not things. People are people. Each person is an individual. That's why you need to get intimate and intense with everyone in that way uh, you are more effective in your leadership and the thing about the levels of leadership you cannot skip the levels 
even if you are thrust into uh, the higher level, you need to uh, do your revision. Begin, uh, uh, begin equipping yourself with the skills that you should have learned when you were at the lower level. Okay, so let me pause here uh, and invite any questions or comments from anyone. Amy, anything from you? Hi, when I look at the levels of leadership, uh, most people that I, uh, I see in organizations are just at level one. They have competence and the skills but not good at collaboration. This afternoon, I just had one question from one of my uh, groups. Uh, I form a you know WhatsApp group after a training session. Mm. So uh, they're saying that you know so and so is not working with that one. This department and that department are not working together. So they're just at level one. Oh my goodness! <laughs> there are five levels to go. <laughs> I have to use this model and. and you know, give people some awareness. There is more to come. Thanks Thank for you. this. Thank you for that. Yes. My heart especially goes out to entrepreneurs uh, because I, I believe in uh, for, for a community to thrive, you need to have people who have entrepreneurial spirit because they bring value. They bring new ideas to the uh, community. But my heart goes out to them because, uh, because what happens is that they get catapulted to the uh, uh, managing organization uh, level of leadership without going through the pipeline. And because of that, uh, I would say their foundation is not strong. And so they don't have that. Uh, uh, some of them, they will uh, they, they take the time because uh, through meeting mentors, they take the time to uh, equip themselves with the skills, uh, with the competencies that they don't have. But some of them, because the, the pace growth of the organization, especially today, uh, businesses can just go into, uh, uh, into overdrive uh, and they don't have what I call as the infrastructure to sustain. So they go up too fast and they, uh, uh, they drop. I've had a few experiences working in organizations, uh, noticing how suddenly the organization grew. And I said, oh dear. <laughs> the first thing I said, oh dear. Uh, I see signs that this might implode one day. And true enough, just uh, six months down the road, the whole organization imploded. They imploded because of their own success in business. Yeah. Yes, any other, anyone has any other comments? Okay, so let's move to the third point, which is the dimension. So just now we talked about the levels, now we look at dimension. So uh, the intricacy that I just want to bring to your attention, at each level, there are many dimensions to how you lead. So this is what we are referring to dimensions of leadership. So the dimensions of leadership here refers to uh, the first dimension is <clears throat> we need to realize that leading involves several dimensions. So when we lead, you want to ask yourself the question, uh, in what dimension of experience do you lead? So is it in the dimension of the mind, thinking, ideas, knowledge, understanding, frames of meaning? Or is it in the dimension of the heart? that relates to uh, emotions, feelings, states, moods? Uh, or is it from the dimension of your voice, linguistic, how you speak, language, words, expression? So this is another dimension of leading at, at, at each of those uh, levels. 
Is it in the dimension of behaviors? This refers to your actions, your habits, commitments, rituals. Or is it in the dimension of your skills and competencies? This refers to strategies, learning, development. Or is it in the dimension of personhood? This refers to your relationships with people and your self-definition. Or is it in the uh, dimension of social groups, organizations, communities, cultures? Okay. So the dimensions of leadership here. Uh, one dimension is the visionary dimension. A leader inspires people in catching a new vision and taking action to actualize it. A leader enrolls people in a vision and enthusiasm. A leader sells his or her ideas. I like the, the, the use of the word sell because you cannot force the idea down people's throats. So that's the visionary dimension. You evoke the, the, uh, the followers uh, energy to take action based upon the meanings that you bring to where you want them to go to. Then you have the empowerment for action dimension. A leader empowers people with power to respond. And as I say that, I want you to think about that on the flip side, a leader who may, uh, may inspire people based upon their vision, but doesn't give the power for people to act. So that will be counteractive. So empowerment for action here means that a leader enables people to find and tap into their potentials. So you are not just leading for yourself. You are getting people to, uh, to grow. A leader embodies the message that he or she wholeheartedly believes in. So in that, in that situation, the leader is an exemplar. Next dimension is the change dimension. A leader leads change and operates as a change agent for transformation. A leader adapts principles to circumstances. A leader manages conflict, tapping into its energy and using it for alignment. So if you have a situation whereby uh, the team members are in conflict with one another, that is an indicator that the leader is not leading in this change dimension. Okay. Next one is the meaning dimension. A leader creates and manages meaning so people can make sense of things. I frequently use, uh, use uh, this term. A leader is a meaning caster because a leader goes up the higher levels of meaning and cast those meaning to the people who are following so that they can latch on to these new meanings and move towards greater performances. A leader clarifies complexity and helps people understand the complex world that uh, uh, we live in. Then uh, a leader brings order and meaning to the chaos of our life and situation. So that's the meaning uh, dimension. Uh, for example, in the chaos that we, uh, that we have experienced over the last two and a half years with COVID and the lockdown, so the leader brings in new empowering meanings to uh, how we handle that, uh, me, uh, that, uh, that pandemic, how we handle that lockdown. Otherwise, uh, as I believe many of you notice that a lot of people suffer from mental and emotional issues during this uh, uh, situation. So that's the meaning dimension, to bring in new empowering meaning to uh, the people that you lead. The other dimension is the relational dimension. A leader serves and attends the needs and wants of others. Every human being has their needs. So a leader needs to be able to know how to help those people to gratify those needs. A leader gets things done with the help of others. A leader creates and delivers hope to people for new possibilities. So that's the relational uh, dimension in the way that we relate with people at every level. At every level, the way that we re relate to people will be different. 
Then, the organizational dimension. A leader builds companies, communities, and organizations. A leader who administers and structures processes. So all these are the dimensions of uh, leadership. And uh, at every level of leadership, you are bringing all of these dimensions. And another thought that struck me uh, just now as I was uh, saying that, that as you move up the ladder or pipeline of leadership, you are moving into one level to, the, uh, to another, you just also need to be clear that you are at a different level to different people. So meaning to say, if let's say I am managing an organization, that is not all that I do. With some people, I need to I need to lead from competency level. So notice that the levels of leadership, just because you move from one level to the other, uh, means to say that you are operating at that level. No, you are operating at different levels with different people from different dimensions. So understanding this allows you to be uh, to take a more uh, flexible approach to the way that you uh, lead people. Yeah. So let me just uh, uh, take this uh, question from Samson uh, here. Yeah, thank you for putting in your points here, Samson. I'm sorry that uh, you could not really speak because of the uh, audio uh, interruption. Uh, organizational, uh, kindly explain more on the organizational uh, dimension. Organizational dimension here refers to um, uh, at this level, the leader now builds uh, companies, not just that organization. Now they are building uh, other companies as well. Now they are also looking into communities and other uh, organizations. Uh, maybe if I can give uh, uh, the uh, example, uh, yeah, uh, nowadays we can see a lot of these Fortune 500 companies, they are not just talking about business and making money for themselves. They're also talking, uh, talking about social responsibility. They are talking about, uh, about uh, the environmental uh, responsibility. They are talking about political uh, responsibility. Uh, for example, uh, with what's happening between Russia and uh, Ukraine right now. Uh, so a lot of uh, the companies are taking even uh, political responsibility, not supporting uh, uh, Russia. I'm not going to into debate who's right or who's wrong. Uh, that can be uh, <laughs> polarizing. However, uh, taking in the political leadership uh, role that they need to play, many of these leaders uh, starts to uh, pull out their businesses from Russia, even though uh, McDonald's is one example, one of the first uh, Western companies to go into uh, Russia after the fall of the Soviet Union, uh, but they uh, uh, completely pull out of the country. So that's about working together with the community. So this is what we are referring to, organizational uh, dimension. Yeah, so at this level, they are administering the processes of how things uh, operate. So I hope that uh, uh, is useful to you, Samson. Yeah. Any other comments or uh, uh, questions? Anyone else with respect to the dimensions? Hey, yeah. oh, okay, Hi. Ines, you go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead, sir. Oh, okay. no, oh. I just wanted to like make a comment. When you said the meaning dimension and then it's someone who is a meaning caster. Um, it's great if it's done in a positive way, but then I was also thinking on the flip side, this could be like a cult leader, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was something that came up for me like, oh, a cult leader could also be using meaning caster style of or dimension of leadership. So yeah, just wanted to <laughs> give you my comments. Thanks. Thank you for commenting that because that is also one of the kinds of leaders that we will be talking about when, when we go to the next point. The next point is kinds of leaders. 
that is on the dark side of leadership. <laughs> Good job, Sarah. Yes, Ines. Uh, I was going to mention uh, just an insight that I had. We have here one, two, three, four, five, six dimensions, right? And uh, what I'm thinking about is that in a sense, we have to have always being, uh, always give a step aside to see what in that situation that I'm living at that moment, I have to have this clarity of each, in each dimension I am in that moment, because otherwise, if I don't have this consciousness, this, I hardly ever I will do it automatically right. <laughs> so this is what came to my mind. And uh, to know uh, exactly what each one means seems to be uh, wise, like, like wise. So one thing I was going to ask you is this. Um, let's say I don't have all the dimensions well developed yet. I'm learning it right now. Um, what would be the basic way of thinking that I that I could even not knowing everything, but I could um, um, how can I say make more uh, right things, more assertive mm -hmm. things? You know, do you have would you have some basic steps for me to? to make less mistakes. <laughs> <This sense. laughs> First of all, uh, I just like to say, don't worry about making mistakes because we make all of them. I like the, uh, the words of, I can't remember, was it uh, Edward E. Deming or some, somebody well-known? I think it was uh, 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 Edward Deming uh, said that. Uh, yeah, uh, coming back from Japan, uh, his his management ideas was uh, was not well received in the in America. So after the war, he went to Japan and he brought those management ideas to Japan, and the Japanese took it and applied it, uh, and they became the powerhouse in uh, manufacturing and industry. So when he went back to America, he became this sort of a, a hero. Uh, because he was able to do all of those things uh, in uh, Japan. So he was sort of a hero. So the uh, reporters came to him, uh, uh, asked him, uh, what's most important in business? So he said two words, right decision. So the reporter wrote down. Uh, then the reporter asked him, so how do you, you know, make right decision? One word, experience. Oh, the reporter write down. Yeah. Then the reporter. So, uh, how do you get the experience? Two words, wrong decisions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, don't don't into experiences. Yeah. Is the yeah, okay it's, it's and learn that. with that. Uh, it's just that uh, uh, this is where, to me, I feel so excited about the model of leadership that we are learning through uh, neurosemantics because NLP and neurosemantics, our uh, discipline is to look at the structure of things. Because once we understand the structure, it is easy for us to uh, put things in place. So the structure of leadership uh, if you want to be able to bring in all your experiences to to uh, to good use, the the structure of leadership is uh, uh, the first skill that you need to learn is the skill about connecting and relating to pe uh, with people. So that's why we have coaching essentials or professional communication skill, the first part of the uh, NLP communication model. So that's about communicating and relating. The second uh, module that we bring in, in neurosemantics is about managing yourself. That's APG. APG is about managing yourself. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, 
yeah, the thing that we uh, human beings, uh, you know, the, the kind of silly games that we play, ah, uh, I know, as a leader, I need to do that. But then I procrastinate. <laughs> I give myself excuses because I play the wrong games inside here. <laughs> so that's why uh, EPG uh, is uh, important over there. Then, yeah. uh, then uh, the third component, th this, uh, these three components are what we call the really fundamental components to leadership. And this third component uh, was uh, is uh, further enhanced. Uh, just a couple of days ago, I was reading uh, uh, an article about uh, Tim Cook uh, giving a, 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 what do you call, giving an address uh, to a group of students, and uh, these are uh, these are business students, and he had uh, this thing to say to them: Whatever it is that you do. Follow your values. Now, it seems simple. It seems simple. Follow your values. Whatever it is that you do, follow your values. But what if your values is like Darth Vader? <laughs> Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> so this is where the module on unleashing leadership comes about. It is about having the right matrix about our world, about ourselves, about our powers, about others, about time, having the right meanings and intention for leading. Once we have this matrix uh, fully well informed, informed from the best of uh, psychologists, so uh, there will be two Saturdays from now, <laughs> from the best of psychology, self-actualization. If it is informed from the psychology of the bright side of human nature, then your leadership will come from the bright side of human nature. Otherwise, that's where we have the dark side of leadership. So that's mm -hmm. also something that we'll be mentioning in a short while, the kinds of leadership. So what informs your leadership? What is the psychology? informing your leadership if it is the psychology of self-actualization if it is the psychology of uh, uh, cognitive behavioral psychology if, if it is driven by this uh, healthy psychologies of the bright side of human nature then uh, our values will be values that are empowering and enhancing but mm -hmm. if the leader psychology uh, about people is driven by the dark side of human nature, the psychology of people who are ill, people who are sick. Then mm. what happens is that the people that you lead become ill and they become sick. <laughs> That's yeah. what happens. <laughs> uh -huh. So, Mazuki, now comes to an, another, another question. Uh, let's say that not every leader is in a bright side psychology. We can, we can imagine that. Um, when, when you were talking to a leader, let's say in a company, mm -hmm. and uh, how do you show or how do you bring the into consciousness to this leader that there are things that could be better or could be bright and that uh, dark side psychology is not bringing the best of people or the team. How do you do that? Ooh, there's a big question, Ines. <laughs> no, because I think it, sometimes it's uh, challenging and confronting some things, but you know, this is kind of a skill that I, I, don't, I don't practice a lot. But I would like to know with you and people here how you, you do it elegantly and, uh, you know, to bring this consciousness to people. Uh, I... Because we have to start to beginning with ourselves, right? Hmm. Every, everyone would uh, do that. So I don't know if you have any my, my My approach is this. Uh, there is one... Um, uh, prerequisite that I have uh, 
uh, from the perspective of a coach, when I want to take up a coaching client, there is one requirement. What's that requirement, uh, Ines? I'll only take somebody as my coaching client mm -hmm. if the person is coachable. Okay, okay, they have the ego strength. Hmm. They have a healthy ego. A person yes. with a healthy ego is coachable. A okay. person with an unhealthy ego is uncoachable. So I take a very uh, simple approach. If a person mm -hmm. is coachable, then I'll do whatever in my means to influence the person to change, uh, uh, to improve. Mm, okay. Yeah. If okay. the person is uncoachable, I do not want to waste my time. I'll go and look for somebody who's more coachable. It's easier that way. Uh -huh. okay. Because my life is limited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it makes sense. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, thank you, Mazuki. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that makes sense to you as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I, I forget some, some things that could be well linked. So you bring me this. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Let's uh, take our, uh, I think it, uh, you will be our last uh, point, uh, which is the kinds of leaders. Okay. Yeah. Kinds of leaders. There are, uh, what, about six kinds of leaders. Well, you can, you can break it down into many, uh, other sub kinds of leaders, but uh, let's look at uh, uh, from this perspective uh, six kinds of leaders and asking yourself the question what kind of leader are you? Yeah. The first kind is what is called as thinking leaders. Thinking leaders meaning to say you are leading people from their minds. So these are visionary leaders, knowledge or thought leader opinion leader. So these are uh, thinking leaders. Oh, by the way, you, you don't have to be one kind of leader. You can be all of these leaders, except for the last one, <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> okay, you can be all of these five leaders depending on the context, okay? So one is thinking leaders. You are leading from the, uh, from the people's mind. You are leading their mind. Yeah, visionary leader, knowledge or thought leader, opinion leader. Uh, and uh, as a thinking leader, you could be as simple as, um, uh, as simple as, for example, you are into bakery. So what you do is you bake fresh cakes uh, every week and putting them on YouTube, teaching people to bake different types of cakes. So those are what we call thinking leaders. You are bringing in uh, content to people. Next are emotional leaders you are leading people from their emotions from their heart so these are what we call as inspirational leaders charismatic leaders personality leaders so, so you are leading from the emotion next what is termed as cognitive emotional leaders so you are leading people from their creativity so these are creative leaders, transformational leaders, innovative leaders. So you are bringing their cognitive ability linked with the emotion to create uh, something new, something fresh. So this is cognitive emotional leaders. Next is the behavioral, behavioral leaders. So you are focusing on leading them from their performance. So these are coaching leaders, equipping leaders, facilitative uh, leader. And uh, I just want to pause over here that uh, quite a lot of managers only see themselves as behavioral leaders. So all that they do is trying to get people to perform better. That's all. Whereas there are, we've already covered three uh, types of uh, kinds of leaders before this. And you are different kind of leader to different people depending on the stage that they are at. 
Next are social leaders. You are leading from the group. These examples are organizational leaders, managing leaders, entrepreneur leader. So these are uh, examples of social leaders. So you are leading that group. So that's why uh, in, uh, today we see a lot of, um, they call it uh, NGOs, non-profits uh, coming along. So these are people who are moving in the area of the social uh, arena of human life. Now, the last one is what we want to avoid. We call them toxic leaders. This is the dark side of leadership. So examples are authoritarian leaders, self-serving leaders, prima donna leaders. So they lead because it's all about them. So this is the dark side of uh, leadership. So these are uh, the, this last one is the one that we want to avoid. And uh, we need to be very careful. Have it, uh, you need to have understand, uh, understanding of what makes uh, a, le uh, a leader uh, toxic. Uh, one of them is uh, being very self-centered. Uh, another is uh, not, uh, not having empathy uh, towards uh, others, being uh, out, uh, outside reference. So all of those things, when it comes into play, uh, the leader there is just going for their personal glory. They are not actually leading for the betterment of the others. However, the first five are all the different kinds of lead, uh, leadership that you can bring to the people around you. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, uh, Guaqing uh, put in here, there are also other leaders like uh, chief entertainment uh, officer, chief everything officer. Oh, I like that. <laughs> uh, in Kelantan, we, we have a different term for this. Uh, uh, you have the leader they call GM. GM. Most people understand GM as general manager, right? So especially Hashim, you can uh, affirm that in Kelantan, GM uh, is a very yes, yes. busy leader. It means gi mari, gi mari, <laughs> go, go to and fro, go and fro, go and fro. They are just going go, go and fro, not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, key. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, the, the perspective that you give uh, the Guaqing refers to uh, uh, yes, Sarah, you put in CVO. Uh, those are titles. Titles that you uh, give to a person with respect to what is the function, what is the role that they need to do. So titles aside, as a leader, you need to understand what are your functions, what is... Uh, uh, and with respect to your function, uh, what are your, uh, uh, what is the level that you are performing? What are the dimensions that you are uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, with respect to the situation? So all of those uh, comes in. Do not be, um, do not be overwhelmed or allowing the functions to define what it is that you do. Because in, in, uh, in HR, you need to give a person the, uh, the job description and they give a title. So uh, do not limit yourself to those titles. Uh, however, to understand what is your role in the organization. So if I were to uh, put in as a summary over here, because uh, the uh, especially in the context of what Guaqing and uh, Sarah you put into the uh, comments, uh, it makes sense uh, uh, if we were to look at it as, uh, 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 as a whole, because sometimes you, uh, you get distracted by titles to the extent that you are not performing your functions. 
when you are not performing your functions, you are not effective as a leader. Uh, when 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 I when I said that, I had this uh, this uh, uh, memory uh, came to me. Where I I was uh, at that time quite a young uh, engineer. I'm still young now. Uh, I don't want to admit that. <laughs> so I was a young engineer, and we were contribute. Uh, we we were working in a startup company and the company was uh, going great guns. Uh, and then um, uh, the company had several uh, small companies and one of my colleagues, my, uh, I would consider him as my peer, uh, he was appointed uh, by the uh, CEO of the company to be a director of one of the subsidiary companies. Uh, and then uh, this uh, uh, the, the the CEO of the company came to me, and and uh, we were having a conversation, and and uh, he said to me, uh, uh, Mazuki, you, you know that uh, I appointed Kenny as the director of the company. I hope it is okay with you that I uh, that you are not appointed as a director because if you feel strongly about it, then I can appoint you as a director of another company. Then I, I remember I said something to him. I said to him, I said. It's okay uh, because we cannot have all chiefs in the company without any red Indians. That was what I said to him. Because you cannot have everybody taking up the titles. Who's going to do the job? <laughs> Who's going to perform the function? So whatever, whatever title that you have, be clear about how you are contributing to the organization. That's your leadership. Yeah. So in terms of leadership competency, when I look at it, uh, based upon what we have discussed uh, to, uh, this evening, is that one is to be aware of the levels of leadership. So which level are you? So being aware. Right now, which level I am in terms of my leadership? And asking the question, do I have the right competencies to be effective at this level. And in each of those levels, am I, uh, I'll use the word, taking care of my leadership role, looking at it from all the dimensions of leadership. So if I am the, uh, the project manager in this company, am I, leading my project team uh, from all the different dimensions. Do I have all the skills, all the competencies as a project manager in this, uh, in this organization? So the levels of leadership and the, the dimensions of leadership, this will define the function that you do. So this will define the function. So when we look at uh, leadership, remember we talk about function and the situation. So from the functions, the functions that you do will now uh, interact with the situations. So when you look at the situations, you also want to know how are you uh, using your uh, level of leadership, your dimension of leadership, you are being effective in your function. And when you meet the various situations uh, in, uh, in your work, in your life, that will define the kind of leadership that you bring to that particular context. And so that's why from the very beginning, I said to you, it is not about us thinking about the kind of leader, the style of leader that we are. Uh, uh, we need to be. We need to bring from the very fundamental: what function do I serve? And in serving this function, where am I at on my level of leadership? What are the dimensions I'm bringing uh, to this function? And depending on the situation, what is my style? What is the kind of leadership that I will be bringing to this particular? situation. So that's how I see uh, uh, when, when we want to uh, evaluate ourselves with respect to our 
leadership capabilities evaluate from all of these angles. In that way, it allows us to identify if there are any gaps. Yeah? Because there can be gaps because of our experience. Uh, uh, we may be lacking in certain areas. We may be uh, push into a leadership situation too early such that we did not learn certain skills. So in order for us to calibrate where are we in terms of our leadership uh, capabilities to look at it from all of these angles? Because when we look from all of these angles, then we may identify what we are uh, missing and what we already have. And don't worry, please realize that uh, uh, please uh, realize that we don't have to have all our competencies benchmarked at, uh, at uh, the same level in each of them. It's okay that in certain areas uh, we are higher in one competencies, in other areas we are, uh, we are low in certain competencies. It's okay because leading is not about you, it is through you. You are bringing in all of the people around you to bring the best uh, that is inside of them. Yeah. So you don't have to be, uh, so this is one of the things that I dislike uh, doing when it comes to uh, movies nowadays. Uh, I'm very picky about what I watch on Netflix, especially Hollywood. I don't like all of these superhero movies. I mean, uh, superhero in the sense that Always the hero has got to have superhero qualities. No, super, I, I like, uh, uh, there is, <laughs> this is a result of watching TV with, uh, with uh, grandchildren. Uh, there is this series called, I think it was Jiggly Town Heroes or something like that. Uh, uh, I think it's Jiggly Town Heroes. Uh, can't remember. But it's about every person in that town is actually a hero. So the carpenter is a hero because he's able to do carpentry and his carpentry is uh, what makes uh, people do well. So the, the, uh, the fire, uh, uh, fireman is a hero because he's able to do that very well. And that to me encapsulates this concept of leadership uh, by function and leadership by situation. Yeah. So I guess coming to the end of the session, I will just stop uh, speaking there and uh, invite any uh, comments uh, from any one of you. Any questions first before I uh, invite each and every one of you to, uh, to uh, summarize your learning. So any questions first? So no questions, let me just uh, move to the next one, which is to me my favorite whenever I conduct this session is to invite from you your learning takeaway. What is it that, what is it that you take away from this, uh, uh, from this uh, discussion? Oh, uh, we have a raised hand, user. So I don't know your name, I'll call you user. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Is there anything that you want to say? Yeah, in, in that case, I'll just uh, invite you to uh, let us know your learning takeaway. So uh, going, uh, going back to user, uh, are you able to uh, access your mic and let us know what is your uh, one or two takeaway that you have for this session? No, uh, uh, no, uh, if you are able to later, I, uh, I'll come back to you. And then I'll invite Lucy. Lucy, go ahead. Uh, if, if you'd like to share with us what is one or two takeaways that you have uh, for this session. Oh, hi, everyone. Um, uh, it seems like everybody is in the manage management level. Uh, I'm not in any managing level or any leadership. I just want to join to see, uh, actually my leader is in what uh, category? 
yeah so surprisingly this is um i get to know that there's actually a lot of um a level of uh, leadership okay uh there's actually a lot of things that i learned from this section yeah okay. thank you everyone for the sharing thanks mr mazuki thank you lucy appreciate that uh i'll move next to uh, ines ines go ahead what's your takeaway Masuki, you, you brought more clarity about all these, these subjects because I've seen this on the manuals of Michael's trainings, but it was not clear for me and I, I hadn't um, read the books he used as reference for, for these theories. So you brought me more clarity and I thank you so much for that. Wow. Uh, I was confused, <laughs> and now I, I think I organized better the, the knowledge you brought in. Uh, Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, and let me just read, uh, actually, the one that we see user, that's uh, Hawa uh, from Nigeria. So she's uh, put, uh, put in uh, uh, her learning takeaway. It's Hawa. I had uh, to change to another device, a leader can be possessed more than one form of leadership except the toxic leader. Yeah. So which, in your opinion, makes the best kind of leader? Yes. Yeah. Because we are leading people in different situations, in different uh, contexts. Uh, that's why we need to have that flexibility uh, to do that. Thank you very much uh, for that, Hawa. Next, I'd like to invite uh, Hashim. Go ahead, Hashim. Yeah. Uh, very interesting uh, conversation that uh, you had, um, Azuki. Thank you. Um, my takeaway is, it's more on the fundamental of uh, personal leadership. It starts on the person itself. And that is the expression of when that leader becomes CEO, COO, and whatever officers they want to name that. Yeah, it's, it's just a name and level. And uh, interestingly, when you talk about the levels that people uh, migrate or go up from one step to the other, uh, it reflected uh, to what I went through some many years back when I was younger at that time. And I went through uh, various uh, persons that uh, the company engaged as leaders. And I remember uh, from what you were saying, that one example was uh, when he was to leave the company after his contract expires in Malaysia, everybody shed their tears because his leadership is actually uh, very uh, humble. Uh, uh, he is a servant leadership. Wow. He served the people around him compared to the earlier, earlier leaders. Uh, he, was, he was, you do this, you do that. <laughs> And, and the best thing of all, uh, we had uh, work done uh, tremendously in, in short time and effectively by the best leader that we had that time. Yeah. And, and when the time to say sayonara to that, you do this, you do that leadership, hmm. nobody attended the sayonara party. <laughs> uh, that is the reflection of leadership. You know? yeah. So I learned a lot from what you, you promised today. Thank you for, for that, Mazuki. Thank you. Thank no you. more arigato <laughs> gozaimashita. <laughs> Thank you. Arigato gozaimashita. Yes, uh, alhamdulillah. Thank you very much for that. Uh, next, uh, Samson, I hope you are able to access your mic uh, and uh, we are able to hear your voice, Samson. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yes, it is very faint. I, I just had it fixed. I see my left hand. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry, Samson, we can't hear you. It's very faint uh, just now. So I'm sorry, Samson, I'll move on to the other person if you're able to put in the chat uh, box. I'll be happy to read it out to the rest. Uh, next, uh, Guat Ching, go ahead, Guat Ching. Uh, hi, thank you, Mazuki. I like the concept of a good leader, uh, also good followers. Because, um, some, 
people they misunderstood the concept of leadership. They think that the leaders, uh, they need to be perfect, know everything, and, and also lead everything, even they are not good in that subject matter. <laughs> and if things will get worse or not progressing, if these people, the leader, they cannot admit their, 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 their lack of certain skill set, and a good leader, they will open, they have an open minded, they will give chance to other people who is more capable to take, to lead the certain task, which is it lead to a collaboration, a teamwork, rather than single person who just want to dominate the whole, uh, whole, whole things. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's my key takes away. Wow. Thank you very much. That's powerful. Mm. Thank you. Uh, moving on to Amy. Go ahead, Amy. Ah, Mazuki, as usual, a very informative and exciting session. Uh, right now, what impacts me is the leadership pipeline. That number one, we have to work on ourselves. Yes. Yeah, our know our values, know our uh, our the SWOT. You know, do a SWOT analysis on ourselves, strengths and weaknesses, our personal gap. And when I work on myself, then I can work with others. Otherwise, I come with my big ego. Yeah, when I manage myself, I come with humility and learning. I think that's very big impact. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, well said. Thank you very much. Uh, next, uh, uh, Lina, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Um, Actually, I have not been uh, attending your, your training for quite some time. This is a very interesting uh, topic. Um, surprisingly, that there's so many types of leader. I thought it was just one leader, one follower. <laughs> um, so today, I have learned a lot of uh, things. So pretty, very, very interesting. I have no idea that there is what you call leader of emotional. I thought it's just like what um, Hashim was saying, the person that just left the company, authority type. But my question is, if there is a leader, you mentioned that a leader must be also a follower. What if that person is just a leader but not a follower? How would that work? Thank you very much. Uh, going to that question, then there is that danger. If the leader doesn't know um, how to follow, then that leader may drop into the uh, kind of leader we call the toxic leader. And because if that, if that person doesn't know how to follow, then as uh, the example that Gua Ching mentioned, even when they don't know, they say they know, they want everybody to follow, then uh, they bring danger to the organization, they bring danger to, uh, to, uh, uh, to the people inside that. Uh, and the, uh, when it comes to an, an organization, we call a team, uh, we, we say that there are two kisses of death of uh, an organization or a team, the kiss of death. Uh, there are two. One is the, the example that you gave uh, just now is one of the kiss of death of a team that the person is the know-it-all. Everybody has to follow them. They give instruction. They don't know how to follow. So they want people to follow them. That is the kiss of death uh, of an organization. The other kiss of death of an organization is the silent kiss of death. The silent kiss of death is when uh, this person, uh, even when they know that something's, uh, uh, something's wrong, they just keep quiet. So this is the silent kiss of death. So um, in most of organizations, we notice the first kiss of death, the, the know it all, everybody has to follow me. However, the silent kiss of death is equally, uh, uh, equally dangerous as well. Yeah. So uh, thank you. I hope that answers your uh, question, uh, Lina. And uh, next, I'm uh, moving on to Sarah. Last but not least, Sarah, go ahead. Let us hear your takeaway. 
Okay, so I really resonated with what you said about the, um, there was a slide that says leadership is intimate, intense, and what was the other word? I didn't catch that one, but I really resonated with that one. And I think in order for you to be comfortable um, being intimate and intense with someone because you know in you're in a leadership position is yeah. then you go back to that leadership pipeline where you have to manage yourself first like that personal growth and personal development is like so key <laughs> in order for you to be efficient in your intimacy and intensity and there was another word personal was it? Personal. personal okay thank you yeah because you can't lead a person or you can't go deep with a person if you're not willing to go there yourself that, that was something that I heard before so yeah that that's and also I like uh, what you said about in whatever it is that you do um, just follow your value like it was just like yes 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 it was like it brought me back to like yes that's the truth <laughs> that's my truth as well thank you thank you for that one <laughs> thank you uh, for that really appreciate your points there uh, Sarah and uh, before we end, I'd just like to read out the comments from uh, in the chat box uh, from Samson. Uh, my takeaway is knowing that as a real leader, you got to know about your personality to be intimate and intense. Uh, and Guat Ching uh, put in there, a good leader, also a good follower, a good listener. Uh, so the, uh, what do you call the, seven core skills of uh, coaching, <laughs> listening skill. And another one uh, from Samson here, as a leader, I need to understand what is missing and what is required to bridge the gap. Yes, because as a leader, uh, we are leading for the benefit of the people that we lead. So it is not about us, it is through us. We are bringing the value uh, of the universe into the organization by bringing all of the expertise and potentials of the people that we lead. So that's why we want to be able to bridge the gap because those gaps may hurt or harm the people around us. So that's why we uh, want to bridge the gap. It is not about making ourselves superhuman, but making ourselves human and humane to the people that we lead. So uh, that part about personal, uh, intense, uh, 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 and intimate with people because we are leading people. We are not. We are not administering things. So that's why we need to get close and personal to people. So with that, I really uh, appreciate all of you being here. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you for sharing with me uh, your uh, takeaway this evening and. Thank goodness I remember to record, then I can upload the video for you to, to watch uh, later. So with that, uh, I wish you uh, have a blessed day, have a good night, uh, everyone. Uh, may you be safe, may you be healthy, uh, and may uh, God bless all of you. So until we meet again, uh, so goodbye and hope to see you again. Thank you. Everyone, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.